Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. So today I've got kind of a different video for you. I'm showing you how to build your own rug tufting frame. And as you can see on the screen right now, I'm just kind of going over a brief little overview of everything that you're gonna need. So first we're gonna start off with the lumber. You're gonna need two two by four by eight um, pieces of lumber and you're gonna have them cut. You're gonna have it cut into one 48 inch piece, one 43 inch piece, two 33 inch pieces and two 12 inch pieces. So the 48 inch piece is gonna be your bottom. The 43 is gonna be your top. The two 33s are gonna be your side and then the two 12 inch pieces are going to be where the eyelet holes that hold the yarn are and the um, the bottom, the other one is gonna be at the bottom where we put the dowels and that's where your yarn will sit. You're also gonna need two C clamps or bar clamps, whichever you prefer. You're also going to need two packs of carpet tack. Three strips of carpet tack come in each pack. So you're gonna have six strips total. The next thing that you're gonna need is two to three packs of one and a half corner braces. Um, and the reason that I say two to three is because I personally only use two packs. However, um, if you want to put corner braces on every single corner, then you would wanna get three packs. Uh, I didn't do that because I didn't need to, um, but you know, if you do feel like you need to, then you would wanna get more. Next, you're going to need wood screws. Uh, so I used 16 for this build, so you're gonna need at least 16, but I don't think there's a pack that small. Um, I got eight by two inch, but I would really recommend doing at least three or four inches if you can. Two worked for me, um, but when I was done with it, the frame seemed a bit wobbly, and so that's why I ended up needing those corner braces that I just showed you. Um, so, you know, if you do three or four, it might not be as wobbly. You may not even need the corner braces. Next, you're gonna need a power drill, and then you're also going to need drill bits so you can pre-drill your holes for the screws, and also a larger drill bit to pre-drill your holes for the dowels and the eyelet screws. Next, you're gonna need some wooden dowels. You're gonna need two of them, actually. I got 12 inches, but I actually cut them to be shorter. Um, it's really up to your personal preference how long you want your dowels to be. And then you're also going to need a handsaw. Next, you'll need some wood glue. We're only gonna use a few drops of this. You will need eyelet hooks or screw eyes. And then lastly, you're gonna need a hammer or you can use a mallet like me, whatever works. Now this is totally optional, you don't have to do this. I didn't do this, but I thought I would still mention it just in case because I bought the stuff to do it and then ended up not using it. But you would need two six inch corner braces and then six uh, five sixteenth inch hex screws. So what you would do for this is to stabilize the back of your frame. So we, you would screw this into the back bottom part of your frame. And that way, once you, once you clamp it onto a table, it doesn't move backwards while you're you know, pressing on the tufting frame while you're tufting. Um, my frame ended up being stable enough without needing that, those corner braces, so I didn't use them. But I thought it was still a really cool idea, so I wanted to let you guys know about it just in case. So I've laid out the wood exactly how I'm gonna build it. You can see all the measurements, exactly where they're supposed to go. Uh, and I showed you where the bottom and where the top was because I know the angle I have it at is a little bit confusing, but that's exactly how you're gonna lay out your wood. And once you have everything laid out, super easy. You can just go straight into putting those screws into each section and connecting you know, each piece of lumber to the other and basically just making your frame. <laughs> So once you have the whole frame built, what you're gonna do is put your corner braces where you need them, if you need them. Again, this might be optional for you if your frame isn't wobbly, mine was. It was wobbly at the top, so I added a corner brace on the left top side and a corner brace on the right top side. And here you just see me drilling my pilot holes, and then once I've got all of those holes in there, I just drilled in the corner braces on both of those sides and it was no longer wobbly. Once that's done, the next thing that you wanna do is get one of the 12 inch pieces of wood. You'll need a drill bit that's roughly the same size as your screw eyes, and then you're gonna drill two holes equal distance apart from each other into that wood. I drilled mine three inches apart. Um, and then you're just gonna insert those screw eyes into those two holes and screw them in until they're secured. Next, we're gonna screw that 12 inch block of wood that now has your screw eyes secured into it onto the tufting frame. I used another one and a half inch corner brace to make sure that it didn't wobble. Then I also used two of the two inch wood screws on either side of where that brace was holding the 12 inch block to the frame just to give it extra security. Here 
Here I'm showing you how to insert the dowels into the other 12 inch block of wood. Again, you'll need to drill two holes equal distance apart. Since my dowels were 3 8 inch, I used a 3 8 inch drill bit to make those holes. And then I added a drop of wood glue into each hole and inserted the dowels. And as I stated earlier, you can leave the dowels at 12 inches long the way that they came, or you can cut them like I did. It's completely up to you, whatever your personal preference is. Then when you're done with that, you're just gonna attach it to the frame itself the exact same way you did the one with the eyelet screws in it. The last thing we need to do to finish this frame is add the carpet tack strips, but I wanna stress how important it is to make sure that your carpet tack strips are facing the correct way so that you can actually stretch the fabric over the tacks and the fabric won't slip off while you're trying to tuft. So the carpet tack has words on it and you want to make sure that you match the direction of the words on your tack strip to the direction of the words in this image. And if you do that, then that will ensure that your tack strips are facing the correct way and you'll be good to go. So once you have your tack strips facing the correct way, you can go ahead and start hammering them on to the frame. Um, again, I used a mallet instead of a hammer and it, that's totally fine. You can use either one, um, but I actually prefer the mallet because while I'm hitting the screws, the tacks are actually just kind of poking into the soft rubber of the mallet rather than being beat down by like a metal hammer. So a mallet might work better if you don't want to accidentally hammer down some of your tacks. Um, also, you see me cutting off the pieces that hang over. You just want to, you know, obviously do that to make sure that you don't have any random pieces hanging over and then you're done. You have a complete tufting frame. Uh, here I am just using the C-clamps to secure it to my bar there in my house, which is where I'll likely be doing all of my tufting. And you can see on the side you have the eyelet hole block of wood and then you also have the dowel block of wood where the yarn is going to sit and voila! One thing I really wanted to show you guys is if you're like me and you have pets or cats or you just don't want a frame with exposed sharp tacks, you know, sitting out, you might not have anywhere to actually store it. I live in a one bedroom apartment. I don't really have any place to put it. I found this TV box at U-Haul that extends uh, to a fit a TV up to 70 inches and the frame ends up with the you know the little side parts being about 60 inches long so it's perfect uh, and what you can do is you can just insert it in that box and then you put the other side on and insert the other side onto the box and kind of just push it as far as it can go as you can see it doesn't close all the way because of how long this is but it's perfect because that's the whole point it just extends to the length of what you need and then you can just store it wherever you want to store it the tacks aren't exposed my little kitties won't hurt their little paws on it and we're all good to go but yeah thank you guys so much for watching this video i hope i helped anybody looking to build their own rug tufting frame trust me if i can do it you can do it too thank you again so much don't forget to like the video if you liked it and subscribe see you guys in the next one bye